What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to explore the concept of what a Taylor polynomial is. So at the top here, we have the equation for an nth degree Taylor polynomial centered at C. And then these two equations here are the Maclaurin series expansion for sine of x. And notice we have the expanded form, and then we have the summation form here. So now let's switch over to the calculator view. So the function that we're going to use to explain this concept is sine x. So we're going to start with just a graph of sine x. And I'm going to adjust the window to get rid of the excess space above and below. So instead of going from negative 10 to 10 in the y direction, we'll go from negative 3 to 3 so we get a better picture of our function. So here's sine of x. And because we're using a Maclaurin series to explain this concept, a Maclaurin series is centered at 0. So the way I think of Taylor polynomials is that whatever the center is, that's where the polynomial is going to be born from. So if we go ahead and write the first term of the Taylor series for sine x centered at 0, and we write the x term first, notice that it's born out of the center 0, 0, and it's going to be close to the sine x curve in that immediate neighborhood. So that's one of the real big ideas for Taylor polynomials, that a Taylor polynomial will be very close to the function it's approximating right at the center. And then watch what happens as we add more terms. So let's say I add in the next term, or I write minus x to the third over 3 factorial. So we hit divide by 3, and the factorial button is over here in probability number 4. So just be mindful, 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. That doesn't mean shout the number 3. So if we go out to x to the third, notice that our new polynomial, our degree 3 polynomial, follows the sine x curve further out. So this is the second big idea for Taylor polynomials, is that for one, not only are they very accurate at the center, but the more terms you add to the Taylor polynomial, the more it's going to cover the original curve that you're trying to approximate. Okay, so Taylor polynomials become more accurate as you add more terms to them. So just to highlight this concept a bit more, let's say I add on the next term. If I go out to plus x to the fifth, over 5 factorial. So we go out a little bit further. So 5 factorial, we're just going to punch in here. And if we graph this one, notice now this new curve is covering the sine x curve further away from the center. So once again, as we go out further, it's going to cover more of the sine x curve. So how can we use the calculator strategically to cover the entire curve within that window? So I hit math up, and I go to number 0 for summation. And now I'm going to write our series in terms of n, which is alpha log. And then we're starting at n equals 0. And remember from the first page, the Maclaurin series for sine of x, we have negative 1 to the n power. So that's alpha log again. And now the fraction, we hit alpha y equals enter to make a fraction. And what we have, let's just make sure we write this in the right spot. So right after the exponent n, we have x to the 2n plus 1, and then we're dividing by 2n plus 1 factorial, which we have to write 2n plus 1 in parentheses. That's just a little bit of a notation trap if you don't. So now we hit math, we go to the right to probability, and we throw in our factorial. Now note that the polynomial we just looked at was up to x to the third power. So if I want to build x to the third power, I would plug in n equals 1. So if I go from n equals 0 to n equals 1, notice that's going to give me the x to the third power. I believe the last one we looked at was x to the fifth, which would be the result of plugging in n equals 2 at the top. So you could see here, if we go out to n equals 2, this was the last one we left off at. So now how would I cover the entire curve? Well, I'd have to go really far out. So once again, this stops us at x to the fifth. Let's say I went out to x to the 15th power. That would give us n equals 7 because I'd have 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1. So then my Maclaurin or Taylor polynomial would be degree 15. And notice I cover this much of the sine x curve. So I'm covering almost all of it in this window. So if I really want to be dramatic here, say I really want to go over the top with this, let's say I go out from n equals 0 to n equals 12, which would give us x to the 24 plus 1. So that would be a 25th degree Taylor polynomial. And you can see it just about covers the whole curve. What that tells me is if I stop this here, I know that all I have to do is go a little bit more past 12. That let's say I go to 15, and it's definitely going to cover the whole thing. So we could see here that now if I go out 
to n equals 15, that would give us x to the 31st power, which is definitely more than we need. But once again, highlighting this concept that Taylor polynomials approximate the function. They are most accurate at the center, but as you add more terms, they're going to do a better job of approximating the function values. So we could see here, let's say I stretch the window now from negative 20 to 20. This is no longer going to cover the entire curve. So here's my sine x curve, but we could see here that our Taylor polynomial that we went out to is not covering the whole thing. So I'll stop it here and we could see that we went out to the 31st power. We have two times 15 plus one. So let's say I really went overboard here. I don't know if the calculator could handle this, but let's say I go out to 28. That would give me 56 plus one, which would give me a 57th degree Taylor polynomial centered at zero. And look, the calculator can handle it. And this would be enough for us to cover this entire space here from negative 20 to 20. But the concept is I could keep stretching the window out further and further. And then the red would not be overlapping the blue everywhere. But as I add on more and more terms, if I keep doing this forever, then yes, theoretically, it would cover the entire sine curve if I could just keep adding terms forever. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the concept behind what a Taylor polynomial is. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.